Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this, this session. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer uh, before we start our class. So maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Vidya, uh, if you don't mind, can you lead? Sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you, but thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us uh, to gather together, Father, to learn from your word, uh, to learn uh, these um, deep truths, Father. We pray, Lord, uh, that uh, we be receptive, be sensitive to the working of the Holy Spirit, uh, Father, and help us, uh, Lord, that we may, uh, uh, the, the seed that is sown in our hearts may um, bring multifold fruit, not only in our lives, Father, uh, but in the uh, people's lives, Lord, in the, the spheres of influence that you have placed us, Lord. We especially come with Pastor Paul into your loving hands, uh, Lord. Uh, help him, bless him, strengthen him. Uh, provide uh, your wisdom, your grace, and your strength. Uh, May uh, your very words be spoken through him, uh, Father Lord, um, and uh, continue to guide him um, and his family, Father. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' precious name. We pray, Amen. 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 All right, thank you, Divya. All right, so we've been uh, covering chapter eight. Uh, last week, we talked about people's performance, uh, sorry, people processes, performance, and rewards. and. Uh, one of the main points that we looked at was whether we are in ministry or whether we are in business, uh, people is who we work for, with, right? So it's all about people. Uh, and in ministry, especially, it's all about people. Yes, there are events, programs, and we, uh, you know, we talk about them, we have them, uh, uh, seminars, and all of these things are good. But uh, remember, it's about the people. When you look at an organization, uh, it's the people that make the organization. One person has the vision. One person has the uh, dream of, okay, this is what I want to do. But he cannot do it without the right people. Right? So we look at uh, you know how to pay uh, people uh, fairly. Pay, they're paid on time. Don't hold back. Uh, hire right. Uh, retain and review uh, people. Right. So when you hire people as well, have a certain process in, in place. Um, retain you know employees who are good uh, review their performance help them to perform better uh, more importantly you know uh, treat people the way we like to be treated right sometimes you know even as god you know, raises us up we go up the ladder we go to higher positions well it's very easy to use our authority in the wrong way right uh, uh, and it's both in ministry and in uh, in the corporate sector as well so you treat the people the way you want to be treated and that's when we uh, you know begin to uh, have certain values in the organization and people working for you uh, the employees will begin to feel that hey uh, you know i'm cared i'm loved uh, i'm appreciated my work is appreciated and so that's very important warn people but never threaten and abuse of course um, uh, just because you know either it's ministry or the corporate or you know we have to have certain things in place yes we love we treat everyone well uh, but sometimes people may take advantage of that and say okay this is what uh, i can do this is what i will not do and we see laziness creeping in people may not be able to do their work well because you know they just have uh, this feeling of okay everything is accepted uh warn people right as i shared last week um we have like a two strike policy um and and it's it's not wrong right it's not like okay it's wrong to do this especially in ministry it's hard uh, um, but it's not wrong right uh, and then we looked at empower people for high performance as well so even as you recruit people even as you have people in your teams empower them you know, for high performance right if i if i as a leader have a team of about 10 people under me and i tell them uh, you know what i'm not sure sure how am i going to do in this project i think it's not going to work out well how will the team react they're not going to react positively right so uh, it's up to us as leaders to empower uh, our, our team members to higher performance right and there are many ways we can do that uh, you know uh, and here in the scripture says 
there's life and death in the power of our tongue. So uh, just the words or your words can make a big difference in their lives, right? And in their performance, especially. Uh, remember that sweetness of the lips increases learning. Uh, so there's a way of putting across things. Be, uh, you know, uh, be polite, be kind, be respectful. Um, and so we stop there. Uh, so let's pick up from the next point. Uh, I'd like to uh, just project the notes uh, because I keep looking down and uh, let me just project the notes. So it's going to be easy for all of us as well. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, everyone can see this. Is it clear? Is it is the fonts big enough? OK. All right. So be supportive when people make mistakes. Uh, now, people will make mistakes. Let's read this, Proverbs 19 and 11. That smart people know how to hold their tongue. Their grandeur is to forgive and forget. Now, all of us will make mistakes. Right? Uh, and uh, you know, when we look back, some of the mistakes that I made, uh, I think of it and I say, man, yeah, I, I could have easily just avoided that mistake, right? Uh, but in an organization, we make mistakes, big mistakes, small mistakes. But learning how to respond uh, when mistakes are made is very important. Meaning, uh, if you if you are corrected uh, for that mistake, how do we respond to it? Um, are we are we in a place where hey, how can he or she tell me this? Uh, when I've been working in the organization for maybe 15 years now, how can he say that? Uh, uh, and how can they think that I can do, you know, I, I, I can do this, uh, or I didn't do this, or I did this. Uh, now, there are ways that people will respond to correction. But as a leader, our responsibility is to be supportive, even when people make mistakes. Right. And the Lord Jesus set a beautiful example for us, right? Uh, so many, all of his disciples, you know, uh, needed correction. They made mistakes. Uh, but the best part was the Lord Jesus used them uh, to continue the work of the ministry, right? So um, all we need sometimes is just a little bit of uh, just a start. And, and then, you know, we see that people are willing to learn, people are willing to make an effort, support them, give them opportunities. If they are complacent, uh, if they feel that, you know, you're feeling you're giving them more and more and more opportunities, but you're not seeing uh, uh, improvement. If you see complacent indifference, you see that uh, they're defending their poor performance. It's very important that we show them the exit. Now, this part, uh, again, you can you know set certain things in place, right? Meaning it can be your two strike, three strike, whatever. Uh, but you cannot have somebody in an organization where you're giving them so many opportunities and they are not growing, and you're seeing that they are still complacent, still being defensive for poor performance. It's only going to hurt the organization. As a team, you're not going to grow if this person is not performing, right? Uh, now, this could, in the corporate sector, it's very, it's it's brutal, right? I would say, you know, uh, if you're not performing, they just probably give you a week's notice and say, hey, uh, you'll have to look out for another job. Um, also, in some places, they just, you know, they just lay off, say, hey, tomorrow's your last day. Uh, now, that is, uh, you know, it, it's not always easy, that kind of an exit. Uh, but if in, you're in a place when you have to make, these kind of decisions, give them a chance, give them probably two or three chances. Uh, but if there's improvement, continue to support them. If there is no improvement for performance, being defensive, uh, giving a lot of excuses, you need to show them the exit, right? Next one, have one standard for all and show no partiality. Yes, can any one of us read this? Proverbs 24, 23 to 25. Probes 24, these 23. Things, yeah. These things also belong to the wise. It's not good to show partiality in judgment. He who says to the wicked, you are righteous, him the people will curse. 
nations will abhor him but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them right thank you now proverbs 28 21 to show partiality is not good because for a piece of bread a man will transgress right now even the book of james right he talks about partiality he uh, the james talks about how uh, if one person comes in uh, wearing good clothes and uh, and he's a rich man and uh, you know will you give him the and tell him come and sit right in front and if there's a poor person uh, will you tell him to sit at you uh, at the ground or sit at my feet uh, haven't we shown partiality right uh, so james also writes about it now uh, god is a god who is not partial right he he's he's a god who treats all of us equally right and and i'm sure we all uh, have experienced this and we know this right it's a fact we may not feel it uh, but it's a fact because we all come uh, to the cross for forgiveness and all of us are equal in the eyes of god but what about in a work environment right uh, it is very critical that we treat all employees fairly without partiality right uh, now they could be now why is this some you know why is this an issue uh, the reason is now we may have somebody in an organization for 20 years so he's been he or she has been there for 20 years they have seen the organization grow and you know they've been there just there working 20 odd years and then now suddenly somebody may come uh and start working and they're working this for a year or two years uh now it's very easy to show partiality to the person who's 20 years in the organization and uh you know uh, uh and for the person who's two years in the organization it's very easy to say hey no he deserves it because he's 20 years in the organization see it's it there is a way to put across things there's a way to handle these uh these situations where you know especially when you're handling a tenured folk and a person who's new uh, but employees must be treated fairly uh standards of integrity uh must be the same for all employees if somebody is 20 years in the organization doesn't mean he can come in late every day or take a take you know uh, two hours break every day hey i'm 20 years in the old no uh, uh, we cannot be partial to him hey he's so sad he's been working for 20 years it doesn't work that way right uh, uh, when we see employees we should see fairness we should see uh, that uh, you know the organization genuinely cares about the well-being of the of its employees now when we do that it increases commitment to the organization right when we are cared for uh, it, it is obvious that we will you know be committed to that organization and i'm sure many of us may have been working in the corporate sector and when we come to the uh, you know uh, i remember when i was working uh, and i had i decided okay i want to join bible college and uh, you know uh, it was the last week and you know become very emotional right why do we become emotional because there's something that we know if we don't become emotional that means we haven't really like the organization and you're happy to just move out of there but if you really enjoyed your work if you really enjoyed uh, you know this working there and there was fairness and there was genuine uh, care for the employees in the organization you will definitely feel it so i remember just the last week um, and i kept asking myself should i you know do something part time here and uh, because i i really love Uh, the way that people treated each other and it was a wonderful place right uh, of course in the organization that i worked for earlier on uh, i did make a lot of mistakes right i was very young when i started off uh, but uh, they gave me opportunities they gave me uh, they corrected me in the right manner they uh, they gave me so many wonderful opportunities you know they didn't say hey you're so small uh, you know you're still small at age so you won't know about this no there were times they would you know call us to sit for these meetings with you know heads head of departments and uh, it was such an honor to be uh, you know in that kind of uh, setting uh, so basically show no partiality uh, equal to everyone listen to all sides 
of the story. Now, Proverbs 18, 17. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. Conflicts, you know, when we look at people, when we talk about people, we must understand that people are different. Leadership styles are different. Working styles are different. Ideas are different. Strategies are different. Implementation is different. Everything is different, right? Uh, so when we're working with people and we're working in a team, conflicts will happen, right? Uh, between people working in the organization. Now, the uh, how do we resolve those conflicts? Now, here's very important. We must learn this learned discipline to listen to both sides of the story. Get a full picture before you make a decision. Now, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, when I, if I translate this to ministry, oh, we really need to do this, right? We really need to listen to both sides of the stories. The problem is when we make a decision uh, uh, very quickly, uh, just by listening to one side of the story, it becomes a challenge. It becomes, you know, it could be a half, you've heard half of that story, right? Uh, you know, in leadership, time is of the essence. So sometimes we don't want to waste time on, you know, petty matters and, uh, you know, long stories and, you know, silly things. Uh, sometimes we just want to be quick in making our decision. But uh, uh, when we do that, sometimes we could pass a wrong decision and end up hurting people. So in these especially important uh, decisions that you have to make involving uh, hiring or uh, uh, maybe uh, asking people to quit and or, or, or it could be anything that is a moral issue uh, within an organization, always look at both sides of the story. Get you know, get information from others as well. Talk to other people. Don't make up stories or don't don't just make a decision immediately. Now, remember, people can make up stories, whether they're believers, whether they're unbelievers, they can make up stories. But, uh, you know, what I was going here, I saw this person, he was, you know, doing this. Uh, or, you know, I remember, uh, you know, they may say, uh, I was working on the computer, computer and I saw that this person was using certain documents of the office. Now, if you listen to one side of the story, we may end up making a wrong decision. Right? While we bring this correction, while we resolve conflicts, ensure that at the end of it all, the employees remain encouraged, or at least they feel that, you know, they've been heard, they've been, uh, you know, they have, their opinions, their take, uh, whatever they're sharing uh, is valued in the organization. Right now, uh, in in ministry, you may have to make these decisions. Right? Really have, may have to make because uh, people may come and say certain things and, uh, uh, you know, it can happen within a church as well. So always take two or three sides of the story, see what, what it is, what people are saying, and then make a decision. Uh, settle a dispute, quiet. To settle a dispute, quiet the quarrelsome person first. Right? Proverbs twenty six twenty one. A quarrelsome person is a, in a dispute. It's like kerosene thrown on a fire. And I love the message translation. And it's like kerosene thrown on fire. Already there's a fire. This guy or good, this person is quarrelsome, boisterous, instigated, ready to even just you know, uh, raise their hands at each other. Uh, when you are in that situation, first tame the situation down, calm it down, and probably separate them, uh, you know, work with the rest of the people first, and then they also work with the other person alone. Right? And once the resolution is, uh, you know, is solved. Once there's a resolution, or once the problem is solved, let's move on with your work. Now, I remember this. This happened in one of the when we were working in one of the organizations where um, something happened where uh, there was a top performer, right? And uh, I think he was really upset that he didn't, 
you know, get a performer of the uh, quarter or something like that. And uh, he was really working very hard, right? He would he'd make those sales. He would come in early. He would hardly take breaks. And uh, and we all knew that he's a very, very good performer. He sacrificed a lot. Uh, but what happened was uh, in that quarter, there was a young man, uh, young boy, right? Maybe in his early 20s. And uh, he had good experience in call center and so i remember this very clearly well uh, he did really well exceptionally well he came to a place where he uh, he almost reached the top performer by two three the margin was just two or three uh, and so the the team decided that hey this boy has just joined in it's just a month but he has you know he's come second closest to the top performer. The top performer has been here doing this work for about 10 years. So they decided, hey, let's give him uh, you know, the, uh, the benefit of the doubt and let's honor him for his hard work. Uh, and, and so they honored him. They gave him performer of the uh, quarter. And I remember that you know, that became such a problem. This guy, the other person got so angry and he said you know, he started using abusive language and all of that. Uh, and it was on the floor, on the working place, right? Where everyone could hear what's happening. Uh, but uh, we, I remember this, my, uh, my uh, manager just came and quickly took him aside, took him to the cafeteria. And there he started throwing things and all of it. This took him outside of the place and uh, just calmed it down and brought him in. But when he came back, he came and he shook hands with this guy and said, congratulations. So I wonder what the manager said, but uh, I remember this because he did a wise thing. He really did a wise thing. Probably he spoke to him and said, you know what, this is the reason we gave it to him. Uh, so quieten the quarrelsome person first. And there are times when we may know in the corporate sector, okay, this person is can get quarrelsome or boisterous or get agitated try uh, avoiding to you know purposely stir them or purposely you know uh, try to push their buttons just avoid that right, uh, as much as possible right but if you have to get work get work done from them you have to get it done right you can't say hey he's a short-tempered person so i'm not going to ask him no you have to do what you have to do uh, but wherever possible just you know uh, try and avoid that the use use the power of a gentle response we talked about that as well right the sweetness of the lips uh proverb 15 1 a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up stirs up anger uh, a gentle response is very very powerful now a smile with a gentle response is even more powerful right uh, i don't know if this has happened to you but you're going in traffic and uh, uh, you know, maybe you're riding or driving, and then you know that uh, somebody's coming the wrong way, or he's not obeying the traffic rules, and then they just look at you and give you a smile and say, "Sorry, I'm, I know I'm wrong." What happens? Do we get upset? We don't, right? We, uh, normally, what happens is we just calm down there and say, "Okay, maybe he's in trouble, or maybe he has to get somewhere, or maybe he didn't notice that it's a you know one way or it's a it's a wrong route." And it's, just that smile uh, uh, or that sorry makes such a big difference. But imagine a person is coming the wrong way and you are driving or riding and the other person says, hey, can you move? You know, I need to get here. And he's not even being apologetic. What are you going to do? You say, hey, you're in the wrong way. You're doing what's wrong. And I'm not, you know. Uh, but remember, a, a soft answer uh, really can change a situation it turns away wrath right so as much as possible uh, we be soft we be calm uh, while working in the organization keep gossip and stripe strife out of your work environment proverbs 17 14 the beginning of strife is like re releasing water therefore stop contention before quarrel starts and, uh, proverbs 17 Sorry, let's look at the other one. Proverbs 26, 20. When you run out of wood, the fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel dies down. Now, 
in in if you if it, if you look at a church and if you look at ministry it's very easy to you know get people to stop gossiping and you know just get to get to work get to do what they have to do uh, and there's this feeling of you know god is watching and we know that the holy spirit is with us and all of that so it makes it a little bit easier right and i'm not saying that it's not there right in terms of when we're dealing with believers uh you know even if there's gossip we can get it out right we can burn it out right uh, uh, but what about in the corporate sector they got hundreds of employees everyone have something to say and you've got these office politics that's happening uh and people are talking about each other behind each other's back uh, and and you feel that the whole pulse of that uh of the organization is you know there's a lot of gossip and strife that's happening people ridiculing each other now uh, it need not be only about work. You know, sometimes people gossip about each other's family problems. That is sad. Uh, family problems, the way they you know, dress up, the way they, what car they come in or what bike they come in. So people have many, many things to gossip about. It's like fire, right? It, it, just, it, it just keeps spreading. It just goes on. It's an unending supply uh, gossip. But as believers, uh, do your best to keep away from gossip. Right? Uh, if, uh, if there are if there are times when you're leading a team uh, in your organization or ministry and you feel there's gossip, bring that person and you know, bring the person who you know whoever you may feel it is. Talk to them, ask them why do you feel that way, and have a lot of meetings with your team. Uh, let them know that this is you know or. Uh, you can probably put out values, cultures of the organization, keep talking to them about it. Uh, let them know that they are valued in the organization. Let them know that it's a team and we're all together. If one person wins, all one person does, you know, wins, all of us win and one fail, all of us fail. So you're making that whole uh, sense of teamwork coming in, right? So if if you feel that it's out of control, and you're already working in an organization and you're saying hey there's too much of gossip too much of uh, the, uh, you know strife that's happening it's out of control there's no way that i as a person can do anything about it best thing that you you and i can do is to stay away from it and right? just choose to walk away uh, and that's happened many many times when people have been you know sometimes they go for lunch and uh, I'm talking about when I was working in the corporate sector. We go for lunch and we all get our lunch, we sit down and they start talking. Hey, did you do this? Did you do that? You know, many times I've just walked, stood up, taken my plate. I said, hey guys, I'll just go and sit at the other table. And they all looked at me and said, oh, you know, probably mocked me and ridiculed what I did. Uh, but I was you know, just making sure that I don't involve in any kind of gossip. One, because it's not right. Two, because uh, you know, it's, it's not what God wants me to do. Right? Uh, God wants, for, uh, as a believer, I don't want to be involved in gossip. So there are times we will have to make those hard decisions. Uh, people may ridicule and mock you, but it's okay. Right? You're doing right in the eyes of God. Right. Finally, show troublemakers the door. Proverbs 22.10, cast out the scoffer and contention will leave. Yes, strife and reproach will cease. Uh, now, having to dismiss underperforming employees uh, or those who are casual uh, uh, you know, or causing internal problems in an organization, it's, it's not easy, right? Um, uh, but if you know that this person in the organization is a continual troublemaker, or if there is character issues, moral issues, uh, you know, they are underperforming every time, any of these things, right? And you see that, um, you know, that person is not improving or there's no changes, uh, you have to make the decision, right? Now, Here's the flip side to it. There are times when people are excellent in their performance, but morally they're you know, completely away. Maybe they're rude, arrogant, 
We've hurt people in the team, uh, but performing very well. Right? Now, remember that the team should always supersede the individual. What is the what is the benefit? What is beneficial for the team is more important than one individual. Right? Now, there can be a person who is in the team who's you know an average performer, but he's very good in terms of you know uh, character issues. Uh, character is very good, very kind, uh, very open. To take correction open to learn open to growing uh just very honorable in his work but he may he, he or she may not be like a top performer uh, so i would say personally i would choose this person rather than somebody who's a top performer who is always having problems with people who's a you know troublemaker uh there will be times we have to show people troublemakers the door now especially in ministry um, it is hard. It is very, very hard, right? Uh, now, and now, when you have people in church, and you see that they are continuously causing trouble, and you know we give them many, many opportunities to change, we correct them, we change them, and we see that they are just doing making the same mistake again, and it's affecting the church. Uh, we have to show them the door. Uh, it's not easy, but we do it lovingly. It's not that we don't love them, uh, but it is the actions that they're doing. We're not seeing a change. So uh, again, in the corporate and in the ministry, when we're show, showing people the door, uh, basically it should be the same love, the same care that we have uh, you know, uh, for each other. We should do it in a loving manner, right? Uh, and so, yeah, so this is uh, chapter eight, uh, uh, people, performance, processes, performance, and rewards. Uh, any questions? Uh, any questions? Any thoughts you have? Any questions? Uh, did any of you? You know, just uh, thought I'll ask this: Is does any of you do any of you have uh, have had a situation where you know you have had to make a decision to you know it could be your cell group also it could be in church it could be in the workplace but you had to make a decision to you know resolve this conflict and and then eventually you it went on to become a decision to show the person you know that person had to leave the organization. Uh, did any of you have to go through that? Um, have to make that kind of a decision. How did that go out? How did that span out? Uh, any of you like to share any thoughts? Or how did you resolve like a major conflict? Uh, how were you able to resolve it? Uh, if there are no conflicts, that's wonderful. John, since you're leading a church, would you like to share something, uh, anything that you feel? Um, yeah, so uh, there have been uh, times when we hear one side of the story, as we mentioned today, and uh, you know, we, we might be very uh, upset about uh, that side of the story. But, uh, you know, take some time to, uh, that for, for me, personally, what I did is, it, uh, it took some time personally uh, just to assess the situation, not to judge. Uh, rapidly, I prayed about it uh, for a long time, <laughs> and uh, called uh, the other party and just verified what it, uh, if it is right or wrong. And uh, so, uh, and as we discussed today, like it is very important to hear both sides before making a judgment. So that was one experience we had. Yeah, that's nice. Thank you for sharing, Sean. Yeah, because at times you know somebody comes and says, you know, this is what. Uh, they said, and immediately our reaction is, hey, how can he or she say that? Yeah. Uh, uh, right. All right, so uh, I don't want to start off with chapter uh, nine. 
right? Uh, what, it, what we'll do is we will start off with chapter nine from next week uh, and see if we can finish this uh, uh, for the two classes that we have next week. Uh, so if there's no questions, no thoughts you'd like to share, uh, then we can just pray and close. Uh, would any of you like to pray? Fina, if you're there, uh, would you like to pray? Yes, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the day. We thank you for the class that we We thank you for Pastor Paul and his teaching. And God, whatever he has taught us today, as we put that into practice and uh, lift your name above uh, every other name, no matter where we go, where we work, and what we do, Jesus. Let it be done for your glory, Lord. Thank you, God, for being with us and guiding us throughout this session. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll catch up next week. Have a great week ahead. God bless. Thank you. Steve.